Hello friends, hello professionals, and welcome to my channel, The Sea of Regulation. Simone here, and I'm back with a video under my basic series. And this one is going to cover due diligence as it relates to corporate structures, companies, and maybe trusts. I think I can touch on trusts as well. But before I dive into the content, let me get my usual disclaimers out of the way. I am a financial services regulator. I am not a lawyer, and I am not a financial advisor. And the views on this channel are definitely all my own and do not represent the views of any regulatory authority or international standard setting body. Now with that out of the way, let's dive in. So due diligence as it relates to corporate structures, companies, trusts, and there are a whole host of other things that could be formed, incorporated, or otherwise constituted partnerships that you may need to conduct due diligence on. Because guess what? Companies and trusts and partnerships can actually need to have some sort of coverage as it relates to due diligence because of how the structure is being used. So you have a company. Remember that coffee shop that I mentioned a couple videos back? Well, that coffee shop may have employees and they may need to pay salaries. I would sincerely hope that they pay salaries. But to do some of these things, you will need a bank account. And so when that company, that coffee shop, not the big one, not the really big one, when that little coffee shop decides, okay, I need to open a bank account to make sure that I can pay salaries, when I get revenue, I can deposit it, the bank will need to conduct due diligence in relation to the company to confirm that the company actually exists. So as it relates to due diligence applied for corporate structures, what is typically required? Well, in the process, you would need to provide the constitutional documents or the formation documents for that particular entity. So in relation to companies in the jurisdictions that I'm familiar with, you would need the memorandum and articles of association. In the jurisdiction I'm from, we typically refer to them as memonarts. If you have a different name for them, bylaws, other constitutional documents, that is fine, it is essentially the same thing. What are the terms and conditions and clauses that are applicable under the company law that are embodied in their constitutional document that sets out what they're going to do as a business? It's important. And if you're interested in a video talking about constitutional documents because there are a bit of comments going around in relation to those all and sundry constitutional documents, let me know in the comments below. But beyond the memonarts, there are other things that are also needed. You would need, and for this example, for a company, you would need certificate of incorporation. You may need accounting records, but what happens if that company is brand new? Well, there are no accounting records and you're trying to open a bank account. So kind of defeats the purpose. So when you're actually collecting the due diligence in relation to the company, ask questions that are relevant if you're the one carrying out the due diligence checks. However, if the company has been in operation for quite some time, you may need accounting records. And accounting records don't mean things that have been produced by an accountant or an auditor. It doesn't mean an income statement. It doesn't necessarily mean a balance sheet. It doesn't mean a statement of cash flows. It could be as simple as a few invoices and receipts, or it can also include a bank statement. But let's get back to the bank statement because we're trying to open a bank account. Now, if you've had a bank account at another bank and you're trying to open a bank account at a second bank as a company, they can ask for certain records. And if you've been in existence for a number of years, one of the things that is typically asked for in the jurisdictions that I'm familiar with is called a certificate of good standing. And what does that do? That evidences that the company is actually still on the books and records of the company's registry. So you can have a company and if it doesn't pay its fees, it's going to be struck, struck off from the register and not in good standing. And why is this important? Because it's still a company. Well, to enter into contracts with a company that is not in good legal standing is actually not quite legal. Now, remember I am not a lawyer and there are legal consequences to that that I am aware of, but definitely don't take this as legal advice. 
This is just for education, and I want you to know that the certificate of good standing is critically important to show that the company is actually paying its fees to its company's registry. Now, I'm focusing a bit on companies, but similar due diligence applies for other structures. Partnerships, trusts, and what would you need? Similar documents. As it relates to a partnership, you would need that formation document and possibly the partnership agreements that may underlie who the partners in that partnership is. You may also need specific due diligence information on the general partner. Now, you have a lot of different types of partnership acts around the world, so it's important to know what is permitted under each of those partnership acts when it comes to a client. But generally speaking, you will want to know who the general partner is, and that should be a natural person. Now, in some instances, you can go down another layer and see that the owners of the companies or the partnerships or the beneficiaries of a trust, hmm, we'll touch on that a little later. Let's stick to companies and partnerships, that it may be another company and you need to find out who that is and who's behind that. And this is where you get into the discussion of beneficial ownership. If you're interested in seeing a video on beneficial ownership and why it is a bit complex, why it's important to understand, definitely drop it in the comments below. But you also need a few other things as it relates to due diligence for corporate structures. You see, those corporate structures have to have someone controlling it. So in the partnership, you need the partners. Who are the partners? Get that register of partners. For a company, who are the directors? Get your register of directors. Who are the shareholders of the company? Get your register of members. Same thing applies to the partnership, but the partners typically are also the owners in many of the structures that I'm familiar with. So these are just some of the documents that are required in relation to corporate structures, and it's important to validate that these things are actually on your due diligence records to ensure that you know who you're doing business with and that the bank account is not being opened by a company that is purporting to be a coffee shop that's actually running a front for something else you have to kind of confirm that they are doing the business that they say they do. And so what else will be required? Sometimes, in many jurisdictions, a trade license or the equivalent. It's important to show that a valid trade license exists to show that the company is in compliance with whatever is required by the government that is applicable. Now, I speak about governments and there are issues in relation to taxation that keep coming up around companies. And it's not just offshore companies and for the record any company that is incorporated in a jurisdiction that I am not in is offshore to me so offshore is a bit of a misnomer in my mind but with that being said I'm gonna leave it here because this is under the basics we're looking at company and corporate verification for due diligence purposes and I hope I've added some clarity in relation to why if you're an entrepreneur or a business owner you may be asked for certain things sometimes on an annual basis, to validate due diligence for the service providers that you're engaged with. And if you have any comments in relation to this, definitely drop it in the comment below. I also need you to do the YouTube things. You remember those, right? Like this video. Definitely share it with your friends if you think that they will find this content interesting. If you haven't already, please, I encourage you to subscribe and hit that notification bell because you would want to be aware of every time I drop another video. And guys, I'm gonna end it here and I'll definitely catch you on my next one.